I turn the light on and I see that the bone that should be like this is like that. And I go, that is not a spray. I'm sure of it. And she goes, what should I do? I said, you should do nothing. I will call 911. I have to confess, I was very, very excited to call 911. Have you ever been excited to call where you're like, finally, a good one? You know, like, this is why we play the game. I call. The operator goes 911, and I'm so amped up. I go, get fucking ready. He's like, okay. He goes, you need police or paramedic? I go, paramedic, but send them all. He was like, what happened? And I was like, ooh. And I realize that while what I'm about to say is true, it sounds suspicious. <laughs> but I got to say it. So I'm like, my wife fell down the stairs. <laughs> And the operator goes, uh-huh. <laughs> he goes, how'd that happen? And I was like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> he goes, was she alone? I'm like, do I need to talk to a lawyer? <laughs> Four paramedics show up. I open the door and they go, what happened? I go, you know the deal. <laughs> My wife fell down the stairs. If you're still not on board with this, how about an old reliable one? You know, how about Tourette syndrome? Yeah. Maybe you've heard of that. If you haven't, let me tell you. When I was in fifth grade, my parents sent me to a new school on a Wednesday. I'll never forget. It was a Catholic school, and on Wednesdays, they had mass. So picture you're a new student at a new school. You don't know anybody, and the first thing you're doing is you're going to church. So I walk in, and the priest starts the service. He goes, name of the Father and the Son. And the kid in the row in front of me goes, fuck your cunt. Nobody did anything, no one batted an eye. He just goes, Holy Spirit, starts reading from the Bible. <laughs> this kid goes, lick my balls. <laughs> like, fuck you. I am laughing so goddamn hard. But I know I'm not supposed to laugh. It sounds like I'm having a stroke. I'm 10, I'm like, <laughs> I have tears running down my face. And finally, I'm able to get out. Heck, up, nobody is laughing. And the kid next to me goes, he's got Tourette's. I go, what is the point? Why argue with this demon woman, you know? <laughs> Just let Lucifer's sister have her way. <laughs> You're not going to change your mind. So for the first time in my life, I took a deep breath, and I just went, yeah, I could see why he would do that. <laughs> Hope he stops killing us. Ha 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 ha. And she knew. She goes, What? <laughs> I go, You make a good point. And she goes, Why are you doing this? <laughs> why are you doing, meaning, why aren't you arguing with me? I go, Mom, I don't know. Who cares? You're right. I'm wrong. So what? And she goes, Tommy, do you know what? I go, What? She goes, I always knew you were a little bitch, Tommy. <laughs> And I go, what? And she goes, ciao, puto. And she hung up the phone. By the way, is there any more satisfying feeling than letting an elevator door close on somebody? I did it. I did it at the hotel earlier. I got such a warm rush through my body. It felt like the inside of my body hugged the outside of my body, you know? And I was trying to figure out, why does this feel so good? I, I think it's a taste of power. Like most of us, we have no power in our everyday lives. But if you're alone in an elevator, you are lord of the elevator shaft. Because <laughs> I think you should stop telling that story. And I go, fuck you. <laughs> Get out of here, man. And he goes, fuck you. And I go, why don't you change my diaper? <laughs> he goes, what? <laughs> I say, you heard me, bitch. 
It was at that moment I realized we have this amazing insult at our fingertips that we're just not utilizing enough. <laughs> Why isn't change my diaper part of the lexicon? It should be the ultimate insult. It should be like, fuck you, why don't you fuck your mother, why don't you change my diaper, game over. I'm serious, rappers should wear them in videos and be like, change my diaper, bitch. <laughs> the president of another country should tell ours, change my diaper, orange man. <laughs> and listen, if you're a parent, you know exactly why that insult is so appealing. Well, listen to me, if you have never been surprise mega-dosed, it is horrific. It is a harrowing, panic-induced terror ride. And so a few weeks ago, I did it to my mother. Uh, I, did. I was visiting her, she's alone. She knows I ate them at night. I've told her for a while they help me sleep, which they do, and she calls them gummies, so. She comes up to me and she's like, are you going to have a gummy tonight? <laughs> and I go, yes. She goes, may I have one? And I was like, <laughs> she goes, why am I hungry? I said, because it's working. <laughs> and she goes, the dog was here, the dog is gone. And I go, oh my God. <laughs> I start to laugh so destructively hard. It, it is not ha, ha, ha. It is a deep, primal... I'm watching my 77-year-old mother get high. I'm not laughing. My nervous system is shutting down, all right? <laughs> I mean, I'm watching her look at sounds. You know, she's like... It hurts. It hurts how hard my a soft... I'm like... <laughs> As I'm laughing, I look at her. And at one moment, her face contorts her fake and she looks at me and she goes tomorrow your laughter will be tears on my corpse and i'm like <laughs> i wake up i don't even know where the fuck i am it's morning i walk into the kitchen at the same time as her i go hey mom and she doesn't say anything i'm like oh shit she just walks over to the coffee maker and she goes I know you tried to kill me last night. <laughs> it was very clever. <laughs> but I am still here, Tommy. <laughs> I go, I didn't try to kill you. And she goes, oh, yes, June did. <laughs> so I leave for the day. I come back later. I go, look, I owe you an apology. I should not have let you eat that much, I'm sorry. And she goes, it's okay, I forgive you. I'm like, really? Thank you, that makes me feel better. She goes, I just want to tell you one thing. And I go, what? She goes, I want another gummy tonight. And I go, what? <laughs> she eats them every day now, she's doing coke, she grew her bush out, she's fucking the neighbors, she's living her best life. If you ever meet her, give her drugs. Thank you guys very much for coming out. Have a great night. I'm a cartoon character, and I've come to life. Here's all I'm saying. I support building a wall if it's around the state of Louisiana, because those people are out of their fucking minds. <laughs> you fucking swamp people, we don't need you. <laughs> what are we gonna miss out on? Well, you gonna get your shrimp? Oh, what a contribution. No more gator, no more shrimp. <laughs> Fucking inbreds. So, cracker ass inbreds, we don't need you. Yeah, tell them, fucking tell them. They'll see this shit. Fuck you, cracker. Hey, are you the comedian? <laughs> I go, yeah. He goes, where do you think the term motherfucker comes from? Hello, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> I go, I don't know. He goes, you think it's from people doing that? <laughs> I'm like, fucking their moms? <laughs> and he goes, yeah. <laughs> I go, I don't know. He goes, how many people do you think do that? 
I go, more than you want it to be. <laughs> and he's like, meh. <laughs> then, and I am not making this up, I could not make this up, he says to me, how about daughter fuckers? <laughs> uh, the truth is this, I'm just, uh, I'm happy to be doing stand-up again and actually standing because not long ago, I had a sports-related injury. I don't know if you know this or not. Um, well, if you don't know, I will try to say this with a straight face. Uh, I, Tom, the guy you see standing up here, I was severely injured whilst participating in a slam dunk contest. Um, on a slightly lowered rim. Now, it was wild. If you don't know, I tore my patellar tendon right there, which, you know, whatever. <laughs> happened to Clay Thompson, happened to me. It happens to us, but... I'm not Clay Thompson, so I also broke this arm. And it's all captured on video that I find very not funny, but a lot of people enjoy it. I have to tell people all the time, like, yeah, I didn't laugh a lot that night. And they're like, really? Yeah. There is one exchange that I do like to share, and it is this. Immediately after I was hurt, I was in the emergency room, and I was badly hurt. I had a shattered arm, a leg that didn't function, and they were prepping me for the operating room. And at that time, a trauma surgeon came into that room and he looked at my x-rays and he goes, car accident? You can't say midget? God damn it. I never thought we'd lose that one. Can't say it. People get very upset. I never said it to be cruel. And let's be honest, it was perfectly acceptable for years. The best part about the word midget before it became offensive is that it's specific. You know exactly what someone's talking about when they say it. That's what was great about it. You could be like, oh, I was at the zoo today and I saw a midget. And you'd be like, oh, did they feed him to the lions? Like, what happened next, you know? But now, I can't say that. Now I gotta be like, I saw a little person. And you're like, was it a child or? I'm like, no, under 4'11 with the hands? Oh, okay. Now you know what I'm saying. So you might be sitting in your seat now going like, well, Tom, what? Can we still say? What can we say? I'll tell you what you can say. White racial slurs. All of them. Let her rip. Cracker, Mick, Kraut, Polak, Frog, Guinea, Wop, Honky. Have fun. Say them all you want. And if you're not white and you're going, wait, are you saying that I can say those? That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Nobody cares. Call up your Italian friend tomorrow and be like, hey, you fucking guinea. And he'll go, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't give a shit. It's not a historically disenfranchised group. The best slur of all for me, I think, is honky. I'll tell you why. The word honky is hilarious in and of itself. But for some reason, truly racist white people have latched onto that word. It's like this great indicator to know if someone's racist. If they act like that word is offensive, run, okay? You don't believe me, watch the news. Next time there's some like racial fight in the news, they'll find some hillbilly. Like, what happened? He'll be like, well, he called me a honky. And they're like, and did you pass out from laughing hysterically or what happened next? He's like, no, I stabbed him. And you're like, oh shit, that's fucking crazy. And I said, there's no better feeling than killing the enemy. It was fucking awesome. I loved it. Those birds are extinct now. I did that shit. I don't give a fuck. Ah, I'm crazy. So, ah, oh, man. Don't you hate everyone? Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not talking about you guys. But uh, no, I've been I've been on this tour for a long time, too long, and you know, I meet people sometimes after shows, you know, I meet people and it's always a roll of the dice. He opens the console, he takes out a joint, he lights it, he passes it back. I hit it out of respect, right, because he's old. Then I give it back to him and the next thing he says is, uh, yeah, I can't drive unless I'm fucked up. <laughs> I'm like, do you hear what you just said? 
And he goes, yeah, I'm ripped right now. And I'm like, well, hands on 10 and 2, motherfucker. Like, keep it together. And he goes, is that all you do? Smoke weed? I can handle a guy that smokes weed. He goes, well, I love it all. And I'm like, what's all? That's a broad statement. He goes, I love coke. I love heroin. But there's nothing like smoking rocks. You know what I'm saying? I was like, no, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Mind you, this is while he's driving. So it's actually like, I love smoking rocks, man. You know, I'm like, dude, turn around. So I go, can I ask you something? He goes, yeah, what's up? I go, what's it like to smoke rocks? I've never done that before. And he goes, uh, ooh. I was like, is that the whole sentence? Is that it? He goes, that shit is the best. And what I like to do personally is I like to sit in my apartment and fire them up. And then I look out the peephole and I watch people walk around and I just freak the fuck out about what's gonna happen next. And then he gave me a head nod like, doesn't that sound awesome? I was like, dude, that sounds terrible. That's called a panic attack and that's a horrible sales pitch for crack. Now I'm definitely not gonna try it. You can't say midget? God damn it. I never thought we'd lose that one. Can't say it. People get very upset. I never said it to be cruel. And let's be honest, it was perfectly acceptable for years. The best part about the word midget before it became offensive is that it's specific. You know exactly what someone's talking about when they say it. That's what was great about it. You could be like, oh, I was at the zoo today and I saw a midget. And you'd be like, oh, did they feed him to the lions? Like, what happened next, you know? But now, I can't say that. Now I gotta be like, I saw a little person. And you're like, was it a child or? I'm like, no, under 4'11 with the hands? Oh, okay. <laughs> now you know what I'm saying. So you might be sitting in your seat now going like, well, Tom, what can we still say? <laughs> what can we say? I'll tell you what you can say. White racial slurs. All of them. Let her rip. Cracker, mixed diarrhea this morning. <laughs> and I just found out that not everybody does. Here's how I found out. My wife and I moved to a new living room couch. It's closer to that bathroom than it was in the old place. So the second day we were there, I go in there, I do my thing. When I walk out, my wife is no longer sitting on the couch. She's now standing holding car keys. And she goes, do you need to go to the hospital? <laughs> for what? She goes, for what just happened in there? And I go, what just happened in there? She goes, is that normal for you? I like, I don't even remember what happened, so I guess so. She goes, Jesus, how often do you shit like that? And I was like, every day. She goes, oh my God, is there blood in there? There could be. I don't know. And I just go, Wah! and I hit flush. I absolutely ruin hotel rooms. Like, if you stay in a hotel room after I stay there, shit is gonna itch on you, okay? Just being honest. Come on, hotels are great. Everybody loves hotels, especially when you check in with your significant other. Why? Because you know, in a hotel, you're gonna have sex, but you're gonna have an elevated form of sex. You're gonna have hotel room sex, which is let's have sex, but let's also disrespect this room. Yeah, I do that too, except I'm alone. <laughs> Like, I always wipe my balls on the curtains because I know they don't change those. <laughs> Think about that the next time you want some sunlight. Or don't, just know that it's on your hand. You know what I mean? <laughs> Eyebrow ring, that's another level. That is a statement. And that statement is, fisting is my first base. Like, those chicks... <laughs> are fucking down. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of you, no, I'm seeing disappointment in some people's faces for sure. Yeah, some people are like, mm-mm. <laughs> Didn't sign up for this shit. No, sir. <laughs> and then the rest of you are like, but, but, Tom, what about tongue rings? What about tongue rings, Tom? What about them? Tools of the trade. Did Rembrandt not have a paintbrush? Who is Beethoven without his piano? That girl has a tongue ring because her mouth is a honing device for cocks. You leave her alone! 
or just show your dick. There's a pretty good chance she's gonna lap that shit up. First, <laughs> foreign accent syndrome. Some of you know about it, some of you don't. It's real. You can look it up on your way out of here. Some people experience head trauma, not funny. But they wake up speaking their native language with a foreign accent. Very funny. I die you to watch interviews with these people and not piss yourself laughing. Do you understand? Like a farmer in Alabama who's normally like bup, 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 dip, bup, dip, bup, boop, that guy hits his head and is now like, eh, the tractor trailer, it, eh, it fell. A la man. That's not funny to you, really? The best case ever of foreign accent syndrome happened in the UK. And not only was it a British woman who lived her entire life in the UK, she'd never left the town she was born in for 33 years. She was in an accident, and she woke up speaking English, but with a Chinese foreign accent. <laughs> Did you hear what I just fucking said? Do you now believe in God? When I was a freshman in college, I looked like this. I looked 47 years old. It was alarming to other students. They would see me walking through the doors, and they'd be like, are you a fucking administrator here or something? I'd be like, I'm a freshman. I'm 18. And they're like, you're a narc. That's what you are. This is my birth face, man. I'm, I'm 41 Jump Street. So with this face came great responsibility. I bought alcohol for our entire dorm. I don't mean three or four, everybody. It wasn't even a challenge. I looked so old that when I walked into liquor stores, they'd be like, hello, sir, how's the stock market today? <laughs> Shit like that. I bought booze to everybody. Everybody got booze. I did the same thing with pornography. And let me tell you, before you jump at me, like, why would you do that? You just watch it in your dorm room online. Well, the story takes place in 1997. And... <laughs> There was a lot of buffering back then. That is the truth. I don't know if you remember the late 90s or if you were even around, but like porn in the late 90s was like, ha, ha, hmm. who am I kidding? I use my right hand, so, ha, hmm. Now, keep in mind, I'm not buying porn for a couple buddies. It is for an entire building of 18-year-old freshman dudes in college. You can't wrap your head around how massive and specific these orders were. I would go door to door and guys would hand me cash and their wish list. They'd be like, I want black cocks, asses, and feet. Don't fuck it up. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Do you know what kind of a psychopath I looked like walking through a porn store with a grocery list? Like, <laughs> I'm getting older. I know we all are, but I am. I feel like I'm getting old. And I know you guys are looking up here like, what? You're perfect. That's on the outside, you know? <laughs> you know what the biggest kick in the balls is? It's when your vision starts to decline. Especially if you've had perfect vision your entire life. I've never even thought about it. I've had excellent vision. I've had vision that's off the charts. Like if I'm hanging out with friends and there's a sign 10 blocks away, I can see it. And they're like, how do you see that? I'm like, oh, Jesus loves me. I see it. I can see it right now. <laughs> and now I have like the squint of death or I look at shit like that. And people are like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm just looking at shit. Don't you, don't you ever look at shit? <laughs> and it's tough to accept. I've been in denial. Do you know where you can't be in denial anymore? The DMV. <laughs> I went to renew my license. And when you go, you sign and you pay. Very casually, a lady goes, can you read line three? And I was still arrogant about it. I was like, check this shit out. Now, if you're sitting in your seat right now and you're like, uh, uh, I don't think it's funny. Well, don't get your tits in a tussle. I got two more for you. So, what about persistent genital arousal disorder? That is a fancy way of saying never not coming. These are people that have orgasms every 90 seconds and they can't have jobs. Why can't they have jobs, Tom? Because they're coming all the time. <laughs> it's not appropriate for you to be like, can I try on this shirt? And the guy's like, Ugh. fuck your shirt. I'm going to wear my old shit. I'm not wearing your fucking shirt. 
Can you imagine? You're like, oh, we're out of orange juice? Or, oh. Like, oh. Just bring water. That's too much sugar. I don't want any more of that. My first thought whenever I walk into any room, I'm like, well, I wish I was home right now. Uh, and I think it's your thought, too. I think you're like, I hope this is good, but also wrap this shit up so I can go home. I actually think that's the meaning of life. Like, people are always philosophizing. What is the meaning of life? I'll tell you the meaning of life. The meaning of life is, fuck this place, let's go home. Now, <laughs> luckily for all of us, I think we are five years away from never leaving our homes again. And I'm pretty fucking excited about it. There, there are a lot of indicators if you're paying attention. Like, number one, do you ever really process that you don't have to leave your home to buy anything? I know you're like, yeah, I order some things online. No, no, no. You can sit on your couch, pull up your phone, and if you want to, just be like, I want uh, bananas, and I want hammers, and I want an eagle's beak. And then Amazon's like, it's on your fucking doorstep. How about that? Isn't that insane to you? You don't have to leave your home to see people. You should. You don't have to. Just hold up the same device and be like, hi. But the number one indicator that we are not going to leave our homes one day very soon are the number of commercials I see for beds that sit up for you. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't been watching TV. There are endless commercials. And I get why you laugh at my physical flaws. Physical flaws are funny. They just are. Disabilities are not. But some are. Most aren't. We know those ones, you know? Like if there's a 10K or a quilt, it's pretty bad. But <laughs> the rest are up for debate. <laughs> and if you're sitting here and you're like, well, well, well when is it ever fu -fu 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 funny? <laughs> well, luckily for you, I have three examples. First, <laughs> foreign accent syndrome. Some of you know about it, some of you don't. It's real. You can look it up on your way out of here. Some people experience head trauma. Not funny. But they wake up speaking their native language with a foreign accent. Very funny. I defy you to watch interviews with these people and not piss yourself. I give him a head start. He's three. When I stand up, I see him dip into the bathroom. I'm like, no. And when I get there, and I lose my shit. <laughs> Yell at him. I'm just yelling at my life, you know? I'm like, fuck! When I turn, he's like, that's what I'm talking about right there. You're a very funny guy. <laughs> Kicked him in the chest. God, those little shits. I took a shower with the uh, six-year-old. He's six. He's not 16. Um, <laughs> if you've never showered with a six-year-old, let me give you some advice. Make sure it's yours. Otherwise... <laughs> it's strange if you're like, what's your name? You know, I was on a show, I was like, who doesn't hate gypsies? And then everybody on the show was like, we're with you. But <laughs> afterwards, they found out. And they reached out. Like, the president of the gypsies <laughs> sent me a message. I guess she stole someone's phone, so she sent me this message. <laughs> we can tell who travels. So uh, she sent me this message. She was like, you said the G word on tell. I was like, huh? The G word? Well, I'm a grown man. And this is over email. She's being a real B-word, so... <laughs> I didn't want to push her, make her a C-word. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where are my N-words at? All right, well, look. <laughs> hey, man. It's modern comedy. Get with the program. Now, then she went on. She goes, well, just so you know, we're very proud of our ethnicity. And I was like, yeah, you should be. I mean, you have nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're good at camping. <laughs> Hey, I was giving her a compliment. 
I was saying I enjoy your ethnic pride because you've earned it. And frankly, I don't think everybody has, all right? Every group's like, we're the best. No, you're not. <laughs> it's impossible for everybody to be the best. I'm serious. I am not put out by outraged culture, okay? I'm serious. It doesn't affect me because I deal with emotionally fragile people every day. See, I have two kids, and <laughs> they bring me their problems. They do, and I speak to them about them. I speak to them differently than I would normally speak to you. You know, they'll come up to me, and my older one will be like, huh, it's loud over there. And I'll be like, is it? Well, then don't go over there. He goes, okay. And I go, okay. And then I go, Mwah, and I kiss him on the head. And that's how I'm going to start speaking to adults who tell me they're offended by jokes during comedy shows. So, yeah. The best part is that you don't have to agree. That's the great thing about living in this country. You don't have to agree, but you'll know where I stand. So if you come up to me and you're like, I was deeply hurt by what you said during your ha-ha show. I'll be like, oh, were you? Well, you should never hear things you don't like. So you stay home now. Well, I'll kiss you on your <laughs> That part, I think that 69ing is overrated and it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see that? Some people clap and some people are like, arrest this man. But listen. <laughs> The story of why is more important. Do you remember when you first heard about it? I do. I was in third grade, and that's too young, all right? <laughs> One of the older kids told me, and I was like, what? At the same time? I almost had a seizure. I didn't know what he was saying. I didn't even have references so I could pretend like I understood. I was like, that's like eating a cheeseburger covered in ice cream while you're taking a shitter. <laughs> and he was like, that's exactly what it's like. From that day on, I was hooked. When I tell you I was obsessed, I was obsessed. I'm not saying it for a story. It is all I talked about, thought about, dreamt about, sung about, joked about, 69, 69, 69, 69. Every notebook in school, I was like, 69, 69, 69, 69. Every sports team I was on, I was like, I'm number 69. And they're like, this is fifth grade basketball. Why don't you chill out, buddy? Every birthday, every Christmas, my dad goes, what do you want? I go, I want a 69. He goes, shut up and stop saying that. <laughs> and I was like, no, defiant, no. 69, 69, it's going to be the best. Be the best, be the best, be the best, be the best. 69, it's going to be like smoking meth out of God's dick. I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. <laughs> and I built it up, and I built it up, and I built it up. And when I finally got to do it, I finally got to do it. You know what the first thing I said was? Get off me, all right? <laughs> my neck hurts. I can't get my nose out of the way. Does it feel good? It feels like I'm working, all right? It'd feel better if you flipped over and polished me off and then I'll do you. Why has it got to be at the same time? Are we late for something? I've been meeting lunatics. I mean, I meet people. I met a guy after a show recently. I'm shaking people's hands, saying hi. Guy comes up to me and he goes, uh, wait, home really? And I go, what? And he goes, wait, home really? I said, where am I from originally? <laughs> I said, I was born in Cincinnati, but I moved around a lot. And he goes, huh, huh, I'm like, yeah, my friend, my friend, huh, 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 maybe you from there too. And I go, are you a person that's talking to me right now? <laughs> and he goes, yeah. And then I decipher that what he's saying is, I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana, about 20 miles south of there. There's a bunch of Seguras down there. I thought, man, I'm a new dad. How about that? I, uh, yeah. That's the best. It's awesome. Guys always hit me up. I don't know why they trust me, but they're like, should I do it? And I'm like, yeah, of course you should do it. It's the best. It's awesome. They're amazing. And also being a dad is easy, man. <laughs> Super easy. It's way easier than being a mom. <laughs> Here's all you got to do if you want to be a great dad. Seriously. Don't abandon your kid. That's it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> No, I do believe being a mother is inherently harder, especially at the beginning. And that's why I don't like when I hear men complain about it. I wake up, I don't even know where the fuck I am. It's morning. I walk into the kitchen at the same time as her. I go, hey, mom. And she doesn't say anything. I'm like, oh, shit. She just walks over to the coffee maker and she goes, I know you tried to kill me last night. <laughs> Do 
It was very clever. <laughs> but I am still here, Tommy. <laughs> I go, I didn't try to kill you. And she goes, oh, yes, June did. <laughs> so I leave for the day. I come back later. I go, look, I owe you an apology. I should not have let you eat that much. I'm sorry. And she goes, it's okay. I forgive you. I'm like, really? Thank you. That makes me feel better. She goes, I just want to tell you one thing. And I go, what? She goes, I want another gummy tonight. And I go, what? <laughs> she eats them every day now. She's doing coke. She grew her bush out. She's fucking the neighbors. She's living her best life. If you ever meet her, give her drugs. Thank you guys very much for coming out. Have a good